Aloha, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to this week's edition of Trauma Recovery University. I am your host, Athena Moberg, and with us in the green room is your incredible co-host and my esteemed colleague, Bobby Parrish. As always, tonight's broadcast is interactive. This is live Q&A Monday. Hashtag no more shame. Head on over to Twitter and send us your questions about childhood sexual abuse. This week's topic specifically is a very encouraging one, and we're going to pull it all apart. This week's topic is self-talk. So we talk to ourselves, not like the voices in my head and nobody else can hear them self-talk, but like the voices in our head. Like we, we think about ourselves. We look in the mirror. Do we like what we see? We, we can sometimes hear old tapes that play that are very discouraging or that are old messages that don't even belong to us. And it's important that we take hold of what we allow ourselves to listen to, and that includes what we say to ourselves. So we are going to answer a whole bunch of questions regarding self-talk. We're going to talk about the importance of self-talk. Again, please go over to twitter.com, use the hashtag no more shame, and you can tag us. I'm at Athena Mowork, and Bobby is at Bobby L. Parrish, and we would love to hear from you. So as always, if you are tuning in on a podcast platform such as iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, or even iHeartRadio, we would love it if you would, well, first of all, subscribe to our podcast by going over, well, subscribe to our podcast wherever you're at, and then we want to tell you this is a video broadcast, so you can go to our YouTube channel over at youtube.com forward slash trauma recovery university tv or you can go to our roku tv channel and you can find that any roku device or any roku television simply by searching for trauma recovery university thank you again so much for all of the five star reviews that we're getting on roku we love you guys we are so 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 grateful and i want to as always, remind you that just like every week, we have a complimentary downloadable PDF resource that matches up with tonight's topic. So you can go over to traumarecoveryuniversity.com and click on downloadables. Search for self-talk or child abuse survivors and self-talk. And or you can also find us over on our project website, which is nomoreshameproject.com and click on the tab that says downloadables. We are so excited that you're here with us. You guys are the reason we show up every single week. And I'm gonna turn it over to my amazing partner, Bobby Parrish, issue a trigger warning, and happy new year, everyone. This is the very first broadcast, No More Shame broadcast of 2016. Take it away, Bobby. Yes, happy new year, everyone. 2016 is going to be an awesome year. Um, how's that for positive self-talk? <laughs> yes. yes, yes, I agree. So, Thumbs up. <laughs> um, so we're just, we're so happy to welcome you here um, as we move into our, wow, um, it'll be our, starting our third year of uh, broadcasting about the middle of the year. And amazingly, we have not run out of topics. So um, and that just goes to show you how complex the topic of recovering from childhood sexual abuse is. So we are so glad that you're here. And I would like to issue a big old trigger warning. This is a video that discusses childhood abuse, and specifically, we will talk about childhood sexual abuse, not in graphic details or anything, but just sometimes hearing about it can be triggering for people. So if you feel triggered, just push the stop button, push the pause button, and walk away. Um, all of these broadcasts are available on um, iTunes, YouTube, Roku TV, like Athena mentioned, and all of them are free. So please do not hesitate to just 
either walk away from the live broadcast and watch a tape later, or if you're listening right now on a taped forum um, or format, there you go. <laughs> Just um, push the play button, push the pause button, there you go, and come back to it later when you're feeling better. These broadcasts can be very triggering, and I think it's a combination of seeing and hearing at the same time. Um, we also do tw two Twitter chats a week, and people do get triggered during those, but not as much as people seem to be triggered during the video broadcasts. So take care of yourself. You're important, and you deserve to be taken care of. If you are in need of urgent help, if you're in crisis, or you need someone to talk to right away, we encourage you to reach out to our partners at RAIN. That's the Rape Abuse Incest National Network. They can be reached at 1-800-656-HOPE, H-O-P-E. Um, and that's available in the US. Um, and I'm not sure about Canada. I'll have to look into that one. Um. Um, I think Joe at the Samaritans.org also helps people in Ireland, but not Canada. But I think RAIN is available in Canada, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, okay. that makes sense. Um, <laughs> I know that RAIN's crisis chat feature, which is on their website, RAINN.org, is available to anyone around the world. Um, I believe. I'm not sure if they have any foreign language speakers, so you might have to um, be able to converse in English, but it is available to anyone on the World Wide Web. If you're in the UK, Ireland, um, you can reach out to Joe at the Samaritans, Joe, J-O, at Samaritans.org. Um, you can also contact the Samaritans if you are feeling suicidal or in crisis in general. Um, they have both a crisis chat feature and a hotline in the UK, and you can contact them and reach out to them. Again, we are so glad you're here. We have so many plans for 2016. Um, a new website, the um, podcast going live on iTunes. Um, we're truly hoping there will be a conference in Portland um, this fall, and so we're seeking funding for that. There's just so much that's happening, and we would love it if you would be a part of that. So um, head on over to the website. Make sure you subscribe to our newsletter. I promise we won't spam you frequently. Um, and we, instead, we, we we'll just share even, with you crucial information that you yeah. might want to know about things you want to take advantage of. Yeah, we don't normally send out a lot of emails. We we want to get into the habit of sending out more emails. We we don't spam you though. We promise we won't spam you. No. <laughs> Yes. No, no, no. We're not spammers. Um, so go ahead and do that. Get on the email address list. And while you're over there, um, click on the downloadables tab and make sure that you get any downloadable references that you would like. Um, we have quite a few now, quite a library of resources for you. And we put together those one pages. We do a new one every week for the topic that we're sharing about during that week. And the purpose is to give you one sheet of distilled, concentrated information that you can reach for um, when that particular topic arises in your life. So head on over there, get those. They're on everything from what is PTSD to how come I can't sleep to how to deal with the fact that your abuser dies to tonight's topic, which is self-talk, um, which is such a critical, critical uh, skill to learn positive self-talk and recovery because our self-talk reflects our view of ourself and our view of the world. And if we feel badly about ourself, we will talk badly to ourselves, And we will talk badly about the circumstances that we find ourselves in. And that is a version of self-sabotage. Um, so if we do not have a decent self-worth that reflects in good self-talk, then 
we are not going to make in the progress in our recovery that we want to. So we're going to talk about that tonight. And um, before we jump into that, Athena, who is tweeting us, and let's go ahead and acknowledge the people that are out there, all of our friends and viewers in tonight. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I want to say hello to August and Kate and Jack and Phoenix and Simi is still sick and but she's here with us so we love you Simi and we hope that you get better and we're sending you lots of prayers and love and healing and warm beverages. Laura is here. Rawr, it's Laura and <laughs> Grace is here. She can't sleep and she's beating herself up verbally and she really wants to know how to stop. Good thing you tuned in because tonight is self-talk. Rachel B. is here. Dominique is here. Sarah, sweet Sarah, I love you. Oh, my goodness. A lot of, oh, and I wanted to say a very special welcome to Leanne. It is her very first time joining us tonight. Welcome, Leanne. We love you already. And, uh, you know, just come and hang out with us and be ridiculous as if you would like to be ridiculous. Um, we have a wonderful discussion slash education portion of this broadcast and we love to answer all of your questions so if you have questions please tweet them out and I would like to share briefly Bobby if I may regarding some self-talk situations that I had going on just this past week yes hit us give all us right. examples okay so you guys I have been on some deadlines and as you know, a lot of child abuse survivors struggle with um, some brain damage, which results in your executive functioning, some damage to your executive functioning, and that manifests itself in all kinds of different ways. We have videos on all these topics. If I'm speaking some sort of foreign language to you, I'm not trying to. Like, all the topics are in the videos, I promise. So my executive functioning has been affected uh, because of just some damage that has been done to my psyche. And when I'm under an inordinate amount of stress, then my PTSD kicks up and I'm quite extra jumpy and my triggers are a little bit stronger. And I tend to not sleep very well. And you can jump in anytime here, Bobby, and like me too, or, or ask me questions or whatever. But man, I'm telling you, you guys, I got hit with like a trifecta quadruple whammy just this past week or so. I know it had to do with the holidays. Yes. And <laughs> I know that that has a lot to do with it. I also know that it's a new year and a lot of us subconsciously put a lot of pressure on ourselves during the new year when it's right around the new year time because we will have all these goals. And, and um, I, for one, am rehabbing an old work injury, my hip. And that is really painful, and that's changing up my schedule. And so I was paying really close attention to my self-talk just this past week or so because I've been writing a lot more. So I noticed, you guys, that the self-talk that I have with myself while I am by myself and nobody else is around is not positive. It is just not. Uh, it takes me a lot longer to see it, stop it, change it when I'm by myself than when I'm around other people. When I'm around my husband and my, my self-talk turns negative and I start hearing like negative comments in my head and they have his voice transposed onto them for some reason, I shared in a couple of weeks ago, or maybe it was last week, again, I really just can't remember, I shared that I paused what I was doing while I was decorating the house, and I walked over and I told my husband, I think I need you to tell me how you're feeling right now, or, or just say something to me about the decorating that I'm doing in the house, because I'm having like all this negativity go on in my head, and I just need to hear your thoughts right now. And having that other person, having that safe person be able to reflect back to you what is really going on with you and what the reality really is and not what's going on inside your head where no one can really check it. It's all just going on in there very unmonitored. It, it helps when you ask someone else to reflect back to you something about yourself or or could you share with me what it is that you're thinking? Or I'm struggling with some self-talk, some really negative talk in my head right now. Could you please help me with that? Having that safe person is really vital because my self-talk 
when I'm by myself versus my self-talk when I have a safe person is 180 degrees different, you guys. And um, we got an email recently over the past week, I'm not sure what day it was, someone asking us about um, a safe person. What is a safe person? We hear, I see you on the videos talking about a safe person. That is when you are in safe community with other survivors, someone who you know will be positive and not judge you, who understands what you're going through. And we have online virtual safe communities that we have built and that we have cultivated and that we monitor and we facilitate globally. So you can get plugged in if the person who emailed that, I believe it was Margaret. I think it was Margaret. Um, if, you, if you'd like to get plugged into a safe community, we need you to friend us on Facebook. That's facebook.com and, and we'll give you all the information later. But Bobby, I would love to hear your comments on my, my self-talk realizations that I had with regards to my lone self-talk versus my in-community with other safe people self-talk because I think it's very indicative of probably all the survivors out yes. there. Yes. yes, you know, and I think that it's, it's another, another reminder as to why community is so important, why we need to be in community with other survivors who understand. And when we sit down and say, man, I am just beating the heck out of myself today inside my head, they can go, okay, we get it. Um, how can we help? What kind of feedback can we give you? We lose perspective sometimes when we're on our own. And it's important for us to realize that that's especially, we're especially vulnerable to that when we're under stress. Because when we're under stress, we lose a handle on our most recently learned skills and revert back to our most basically learned skills which were those probably that we learned in childhood. So when we're under stress, when our PTSD is flaring up, when our depression is flaring up, when our relationships seem to be going to heck in a handbasket, we are going to lose our grasp on new healthy skills and revert back to ones that are not so healthy and not so supportive. In, in a sense, it's like losing our perspective. You know, we don't realize anymore that we're standing halfway up the mountain and we've made a lot of progress on our recovery. Instead, all we see is the fact that we're still, you know, a thousand miles away from the mountain top. And yeah. so we need people who are in community with us to say, whoa, 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 wait a minute. That's not true. Look how far you've come. Look where you are. Um, and I know that you feel like you've not made any progress right now. I know that maybe you've lost touch with the fact that you're a good and lovable person, but I'm here to tell you that you are. And here are some things that I love about you, A, B, C, and D. And so being isolating and being outside of social contact is like a natural for survivors because it was probably part of our grooming when we were children to keep us isolated and keep us um, socially away from other people who might be able to tell us that being sexually abused is probably not what happens in every home and we might therefore run the risk of reporting it. Um, so we tend to be social isolators. And when we socially isolate, when we're stressed, it's not healthy. Um, it's important to stay in community. Even if you're not attending every single event with a smile slapped on your face. Um, there was a wonderful meme that went around this last week. And I can remember, I know I um, shared it on my feed after I saw it from someone else. And it said um, something to the effect of, it's okay not to be okay. And then down at the bottom, I said, today I'm going to be my okayist. I love um, it. Being our And I love that. Being because our I think that's one of the gifts that our survivor community gives to the members is the space to not be okay. You know, and to yeah. say, I'm not okay today. I'm not okay. And for everyone to say, you know what, that's okay. You don't have to be happy. You don't have to fake it. You don't have to slap a smile on your face and pretend that everything's fine. Um, we still love you. You're welcome. We, we want to have you here. And you don't have to pretend. Um, and so that 
those are all critical components of our getting healthy. And it's a, a critical part of our support while we learn um, how to talk positively and truthfully to ourself, um, about ourself, and about the world around us. And I, I'm going to stress that tonight because I think a lot of self-talk, there's a lot of education out there about self-talk. Um, and a lot of it focuses on affirmations. And I have a few problems with affirmations, and we'll get into that later when we do the one page. But um, very often, they self-talk does not talk about the component of how you see the world. And that's important because for us to, let's see how I can say, for us to successfully navigate within the world, we have to see that as possible. We have to see the world as a place that we can survive. We have to have hope that we're going to do this work and we're going to go out there and we're going to be okay. And so if we are labeling our experiences and the world 95% of the time or even 100% of the time as negative, then guess what? We're not going to want to go out there. And we're setting ourselves up to have a negative experience when we go out there. Negative self-talk about the world and our situations that we encounter is a huge source of self-sabotage. And so I really, 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 really want us to talk about that tonight. And I really want all of you to be aware of that. There's a huge difference in how we approach the world when we look at a situation and go, wow, okay, this is going to be hard, as opposed to this is going to be horrific and I have no clue in the world how I'm going to survive this. Okay? The second one is going to set you up to have a hard time. The first one is acknowledging that it's hard, but it's not saying it's impossible. And we can do hard things, you guys. We already survived our childhood. We can do yeah. hard things. I agree. Okay? So I agree. There's um, my little lecture. <laughs> no, I love <laughs> on the you topic said. before we get into the one page. Um, no, I, I love what so, you said, Bobby. Bobby I don't know, Athena. What do you think? Can you hear me? Can you hear me at all? Bobby, Bobby, can you hear me? I don't think she can hear me, you guys. Um, what I was going to say was I love everything you said, and so many people are tweeting in some really great uh, uh, suggestions. In fact, Laura, uh, her negative voice is a punitive parent. Schema therapy um, is what she's doing, and she has a flashcard that she made with her therapist and um and dominique you're so funny a week later you're still tripping out on requesting positive feedback it's like magic yes um so what i wanted to say in addition to what bobby was was talking about bobby are you back can you hear me okay now i am <laughs> i'm so sorry you guys oh, i keep no. losing my audio Oh, that's okay. It's been happening every week. That's why I'm still looking into that other software that I told you about, Bobby. Um, I wanted to, to say, um, uh, I wanted to add to something that you mentioned, Bobby, because I do okay. think, that it, I think that it is very important that we clarify that there is a difference between self-talk and affirmations. You have a problem with affirmations. They, that, it's, affirmations don't work for you. They work great for me because they help me right. replace, they replace my old negative tapes. If I do affirmations, um, if, I, if I find an affirmation that resonates with me, that I find to be true and it is in alignment with who I'm about, and I practice that affirmation or repeat that affirmation or put it up on my mirror or my cabinet, or in my in my truck, on my dashboard, then that is something that I remember, and I have that as a default rather than my negative old tapes that play from my childhood telling me that I wish you were never born, I should have had an abortion, you're ridiculous, you're fat, you're lazy, you're stupid, you look like a whore. All of those are the voices that I hear in my head. And to answer yes. someone's question, someone was tweeting in saying, 
why is it that I hear when 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 I am triggered, I hear all, only negative voices in my head. Like when you guys are talking to me, I hear it in a negative tone. Well, be, because that's all you were told, probably. Right. We when we're triggered, you guys. I want you to. I hope you get this. When we are triggered, if you are triggered, if you live with complex PTSD or classic PTSD, only your most primal parts of your brain are actually functioning. Your fight or flight is functioning. And if your fight or flight or your most natural or your oldest message that you have going on in your head that is the default message is something that was being told to you that was negative, you're only good for this, you're not good for that, you're never going to grow up to be anything, you're never going to survive this, you're never going to be that, you're stupid, you're clumsy, you're lazy, you're this, you're that. Whatever your negative version is that is your default that is all you are going to hear. So that's why when I was decorating the house and I could tell I was triggered, that I paused because I was hearing negative voices. And that's why I asked my husband for the truth because I couldn't come up with the truth in that moment. Those affirmations weren't playing in the forefront of my mind that I was talking about, which is why Bobby, which is why Bobby is going to go into detail and what we are going to go into detail on the one page, and we do want to specify that self-talk is not affirmations. Right. Affirma affirmations can be self-talk. You can use affirmations as self-talk, but they right. are not one, they are not synonymous. Those are no. those two are not synonymous. They are not one in the same. And I really just needed to clarify that, Bobby, yeah. because yeah. like I talk a lot about affirmations when I write. And I talk a lot about affirmations when I'm ministering to people or when I'm praying for people, whatever. Like, I, I think of gratitudes. I, you know, those are things that I lean on. That's what I lean on. That's my default that I go to when I'm cognitively present, when I'm fully present and I'm not triggered. Those are my defaults. And so right. I try to use those defaults that are when I'm fully functioning adult Athena and I'm not triggered and I'm not in child mode and I'm not in crisis and I'm not barely hanging on in full-blown PTSD or depression or whatever's going on, I want to build myself up when I'm fully functioning adult Athena so that that is my new default. And it's been working yes, over yes. time. It's been working yes, over time, yes. Bobby. Yes, yes, exactly. And that's one of the things we're going to talk about tonight is that, you guys, this isn't easy. And this morning in chat, um, if you don't know, we have three Twitter chats a week. The first one is Monday um, at 10 a.m. Pacific time, and that's primarily for our UK crowd because that is 6 p.m. for them. Uh, anybody can come. And then there's this one that you're on now, which is a video and Twitter interactive chat. And then Tuesday night is our third Twitter chat of the week, and that's sex abuse chat, and that's at 6 p.m. Pacific or 2 o'clock Wednesday morning for the UK crowd. And someone this morning brought this up, and I think it is the perfect analogy, that positive self-talk is a foreign language for us. And they're right. Um, you know how you there's that term, English is a second language? Um, negative self-talk is our first language. And positive self-talk is a foreign language to us. And if you have ever had to learn a foreign language, you know that it's hard and you have to go through the same process when you're learning how to speak positively yourself. You trip over your tongue. You can't remember the right word. It feels fake. You know that it sounds so different from people who are fluent in it. Um, and it takes a while. You don't become fluent in positive self-talk, just like you don't become fluent in a foreign language in a matter of a, a couple of months. Um, I took four years of French, and at the end of that time, I still wasn't fluent like a native speaker. So it is a slow process, um, and it isn't always easy, and it's not always smooth. So don't beat yourself up, and don't expect yourself to master this topic. Um, this subject in a matter of, you know, a few months. It's not that easy. No. And I, I, Bobby and I spend a lot of time encouraging you guys in this area. And Bobby, I just want, I'm so excited that you talked about that. I'm so grateful because 
Bobby and I cumulatively have decades and decades and decades and decades. I think we counted like 50 years of recovery. <laughs> And which is really like we're dating ourselves. Seriously, I have an adult son. She has a teenage son. Like together we have 50 years of recovery from childhood abuse. So childhood sexual abuse specifically. So you guys, um, I, I wrote this to someone in an email. I forget. It's all blending and melding together right now. But the reason we facilitate these online safe communities that are available globally is because Bobby and I have discovered over the last two years or so that collectively in community we heal at an exponential rate our healing is is expedited it it, it is deeper and quicker and yeah. it, and it lasts longer the things right. you learn last longer like my resiliency the, the things I'm able to bounce back from quickly, again, there's videos, there's 75, 77 videos for you guys on all these words we're using. They're like, what are they talking about? But, and that's negative. I'm hearing it in my head going, what is she talking about? And then you guys might not even be like thinking that that's what I think. Anyway, anyway, oh my gosh, that was such a real time situation. So um, if you're wondering what all these words are, so no, but resiliency, you guys, Ever since the last couple of years, over the past couple of years since Bobby and I have really been focusing on survivors and community full time, like I don't even know how many hours per week, collect, probably 100 hours a week collectively on average, um, my healing and my recovery has, it's like it sticks. There's sticking power and it's faster growth and it is wider and deeper and it's just it's exponential is the only word that I can come up with so um, yeah. that's why we talk so much about being in safe community you guys that's why we do all of the stuff that we're doing so um, there are way too many tweets for me to acknowledge every single one of you but I just want to to say thank you you guys are amazing and Grace Hope joined us as well and and Nora joined us also, and um, I'm just, while you pull up the one page, Robbie, I'm just going to try to get back to everyone and try to tweet okay. some people. Um, and Jack is hanging out with all of our domestic violence chat peeps and, and playing double duty. And um, Yes, that's yeah. because domestic violence chat takes place at the same time as this, uh, no, the No More Shame, our second Twitter chat. So he jumps back and forth between both. Yes. And, you know, um, a quote of the week, Kate agrees. Negative self-talk was our first language. Yeah. So true. So yep. true. <laughs> That's so true. So, so let's, <laughs> let's jump into content. Let's get the one page up and start talking about that. Um, while I push all my magic buttons here behind the, uh, behind the curtain, I feel like the Wizard of Oz. You are much prettier than the wizard. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, here we go. Self-talk. Almost all of us, and to be honest with you, I couldn't think of anyone who doesn't do this, but nothing is 100%, so I, I, made, I said almost all. Almost all of us carry on an internal dialogue with ourselves throughout the day. We talk to ourselves about not just who we are and how we're behaving in the world, but what we think of people and the situations we encounter. How we talk to ourselves and what we say has a remarkably significant impact on how we view ourselves and the world. Okay, so it's not just about how we view ourselves. It's about how we view the world. And you need to stop for a minute and think back. You know, we're so, we've been taught, you know, how did we view ourselves based on our upbringing? But I want you to really think about what your abusers, what your dysfunctional family, what your enablers taught you about the world. Did they teach you that the world is an unsafe place? Did they teach you that everyone in the world is out to get you? If you're a female, did they teach you that every man has no goal but to get you into bed? Did they teach you the world is not safe? and you're never going to be okay? Did they teach you that everyone in the world is always going to hate you because they can see your flaws and see how horrible you are? 
you really need to become aware of what you think about the world in general based on what you were taught as a child. Okay, so for this reason, it's really important that our self-talk be as honest, reasonable, and positive as possible. Okay, <laughs> and I want to take this apart right here really quickly. Honest, okay, that doesn't mean that we're telling you that you have to get up every day and say, today I'm going to conquer the world. Um, this is this is where I'm going to talk a tiny bit about affirmations versus self-talk. The concept of affirmations has been hijacked by so many different um, fields out there of people. Um, especially, you'll hear it in the in the motivational speaking and perhaps in the sales and success world. Um, and they will talk about, you know, you're going to get up every day and you're going to say to yourself, I'm going to sell a million dollars worth of cups today. Um, that's not what we're talking about. That is, those are affirmations. That is not self-talk. Self-talk is honest. Okay. There, so when you, there, there are affirmations out there that are not ridiculous like that. Oh yes. I'm sorry. I don't mean that, but what I just want to bring up the point that um, self-talk needs to be honest and it's not setting yourself up with an expectation that you can't reach. Yes, 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 okay. yes. Okay, so some affirm, yes, so actions such as I am safe in the world and what happened to me as a child is no longer here to hurt me. That's an affirmation and that's positive self-talk. Um, I just don't want people to think that we're saying that they have to set themselves up with a wild um, talk about themselves. You know, a lot of people aren't at the place yet where they can stand up and say, I love myself totally and completely. Okay, that's all right. So perhaps your self-talk about yourself today is, today I'm going to do my best to be loving and compassionate to myself. Okay? It's honest. Self-talk is honest. But in being honest, you have to recognize the lies. And we have talked before about how your abuse lies to you. And your abusers lied to you and they told you, like Athena has talked about tonight, you're a whore, you're useless, you're ugly. No one is ever going to love you. Those are not, that's not the truth. Okay? And that, and if you're believing that, that's the time to tap into your safe community and say, okay, these are the voices I'm hearing in my head. Can you help me determine the truth? Because it's not the truth. You are lovable. You are not to blame for what happened when you were a child, and you are worthy of healthy and loving friendship and relationships. So our self-talk does need to be honest, it needs to be reasonable, and it needs to be as positive as possible. Um, what we say to ourselves is a direct reflection of what we think about ourselves and the world. In other words, the value we place upon both of these things. So our reflect, our self-talk is a reflection of what we think, what we our value, what we see as our value, and what we see as a value in the world. If we love ourselves, we speak to ourselves in a positive way, and we see the world as a good place to exist within. Okay, now that doesn't mean that the world is always going to be a wonderful place. It doesn't even mean that something that we do or some place that we go is always going to be safe. But it does mean that we acknowledge that there can be and there are good things in the world. Hey, Bobby. Uh huh. Nora just says that in the mornings she does something called morning pages. First thing she does is she fills three pages a day of writing. And she leaves the negativity there. I like it. I like it too. I like that. I love um, that. That is that is an excellent best practice. If if you have the time 
to do writing or journaling and you can leave your negativity on the paper. I also have uh, therapists and colleague friends and we all talk, we've talked about this a lot before, but you, know, you write down negative things or any negative self-talk that you have on papers and then you rip them up into little pieces or you throw it like, like, like Debbie says, throw it in the bin. There you go. Throw it in the bin. Um, and you know what? If you don't have time for three pages or three pages sounds overwhelming to you, then sit down for three minutes and write. Um, it, it doesn't have to feel overwhelming. And if it feels overwhelming, then you won't do it. So if you want to try it and three pages sounds overwhelming, cut it down to something that doesn't feel overwhelming. Just this last week, I was talking with a client who wanted um, more positivity in her life. Um, but she felt like, her whole day was filled with running from this to running to that to running to this to running to that. And she said that she thought if she was able to meditate more, that she would feel better. And so we decided a goal, a good goal for her was five minutes every morning. Five minutes, that's it. That's what she was going to start with. Was that going to be what she always did? No. She was going to gradually move the time up, but it felt manageable to start with just five minutes. And that is truly a good way to do almost anything, is to start small. And it works with self-talk, too. We're not talking about, okay, you guys have 24 hours, and at the end of that 24 hours, everything that you say to yourself um, about yourself and the world has to be positive. And if you don't do that, then you failed. <laughs> start small. Start small. Um, Start with, I'm going to try this. I'm going to learn this. I'm going to do my best today. Um, that's all that you have to do to start with. If we think negatively about ourselves, we will tell ourselves bad things. And we will label the world such things as terrible, scary, and horrible place to live. And you know, you guys, if you see the world that way, I can understand why you feel hopeless. Because the world is not a good place to live in when it is horrible. And I know for myself, I get in that headspace. And to me, that's a red flag that my depression is getting bad. Yeah. When I sit there and I say to myself, I can't do this one more day because it doesn't matter what I do. Everything is always crappy and people are mean and I can't do this one more day. To me, that's, that's my red flag, my personal red flag that my depression is worsening, is when I have lost my grasp on seeing the world as a positive place to live in. Um, unfortunately, for survivors of child abuse, our abusers groomed us, our abusers and their enablers, groomed us to feel badly about ourselves. Because if we felt badly about ourselves, then when we were less likely to resist the abuse, reach out to anyone and report the abuse because they've taught us that we're bad, right? And if, if we're bad, then we must have deserved what they're doing to us or to seek out friends. And if you seek out friends, then guess what? You might tell them about what's happening. So they teach us to feel badly about ourselves because that helps them to feel safer. So instead we endure and feel that the abuse is our fault. The grooming sticks with us into adulthood in the form of negative and critical self-talk. And unfortunately, because of the things we learned as a child, many of us grow up and get into dysfunctional relationships, whether they're romantic relationships or friendship relationships. And guess what? Those relationships reinforce the messages we got when we were a child. And they don't feel particularly wrong to us because it's what we're used to. And so there we go. We continue our negative self-talk and we continue our negative perceptions of ourselves and the world. Long after we have ceased hearing our abuser talking in front of us, we hear them talking in our head. We hear the put downs, the judgments, and the disgust or disdain. We hear their opinions about the world 
and the catastrophizing that everything is going to turn into hell on earth when the slightest difficulty occurs. Um, and I can't tell you how many survivors I have talked to who say to me, I can still hear my mom's voice in my head. I can still hear my dad's voice in my head. I can still hear my grandfather's voice in my head, my aunt's voice in my head. And it's real. Um, I, I get it. And it's true. We can hear those for years and years and years afterward, especially when that voice is reinforced by adult relationships that we get into. Yeah, most definitely. That's happened to me a lot, actually. Um, I can't remember who said it, but someone in one of our chats, oh, months and months ago, I think it was Joe. Joe talking about how her abuser was taking up, was living in her head for rent free. I think and that was, was that was Simmy. That was Simmy. Was that Simmy? Okay. Yeah, Simmy said she she chose to forgive her abuser because she was sick of him living in her head rent free. So there we go. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. You guys are so awesome. Thanks for all of the the great um, suggestions and tweets. We had a, a little a little spiral party um, go on here, and we've we've lost a. A half a dozen to a dozen people here. So, um, uh -oh. Kate, I know, um, but we refer, I referred them to Rain and the Samaritan. So, um, everything's great. You guys, we are not a crisis chat. I don't know if we said that at the beginning of chat, but you know, we are not a, uh, supplement. We are, we are not a replacement for professional mental health care. And if you are in crisis, we are not the chat that you need to be, um, on. If you're in crisis, you need to go over to Rain's crisis chat feature, or you need to email joe at samaritans.org. We are not equipped to be a crisis chat. That's why we always do a disclaimer at the beginning of every broadcast. So um, we're not being unloving or uncaring. Um, Bobby, your comments on that? It is triggering. It is triggering you guys, and this is yeah. a hard. This is this is a hard topic to talk about because it gets to the one of the core issues of our recovery, which is that we feel terrible, we feel like things are never going to get better, and we feel like the world is not worth living in. Okay? So if you are triggered and those are the thoughts that are going on inside your head, then you need to reach out and get some help. Okay? Um, again, talking about things and and uncovering these core issues can be so triggering and it can just be like a confronting us right in the nose with things that we need to work on so take a break walk away from the chat or the video and access your support system um, it's it's worth it you're worth it and you deserve that yeah you deserve to feel good. And that's why we yeah. issue trigger warnings. That's why we make sure that you know that there is help out there. We are here to be a resource for you, you guys. And we don't ever want you to participate at the expense of your own health. That is counterproductive and that would not ever, ever, ever be anything we would ask of you or want for you to do. So please, again, just press the pause button, put the Twitter away, put everything away, and um, and take excellent care of yourself, please. Yep. And that you know that goes for every week, not just today talking about self talk. Yep. Um, I mean that that that's what we need to do every day. That's why every single week we say that. So we love you, and we don't ever want you to not to not be okay. Because what we're about, what we're here about is learning to be okay. Um, not triggering feeling badly. So let's look at this last paragraph before we get into tips and strategies. Um, this one page follows the same format as all of our one pages. The top half is about education about the topic. What is self-talk? How do we get negative self-talk? Why do we need to change it? Um, and then the second half of the one page is about tips and strategies for changing 
or adjusting the topic now. Like Athena said, between the two of us, we have about 50 years um, of experience in being in recovery, and we know that the after effects of childhood abuse, of childhood sexual abuse, are horrific. And it's very painful. And we want you to feel better today. Today, today, today. This is not pie in the sky talk about what might help you feel better a year from now. Let's get you feeling better today. And if you employ some of these tips and strategies, you will feel better. Um, Athena and I have a catchphrase that we use. See it, stop it, change it. Yeah. There you go. That's it. Three sentences, each sentence, two words, six words. Um, follow the strategy of see it, stop it, change it to change your self-talk. Okay? The first step is becoming aware of your negative self-talk. So the first thing you're going to do is slap that anthropologist hat on your head and observe what's going on inside your head. When you see this negative self-talk, put a halt to it. And then, but see, that's that's not just, a lot of people give you just those two bits of advice, but that's not really going to help because now you've got a vacuum in your head where something used to belong and your brain's going to desperately try and find something to replace it with. And that unsupervised brain, as pesky as it is, will sometimes put something negative back in that place. So you need to have a positive thing to put into place. Okay, so see your negative self-talk, stop the negative self-talk, and change it, put into its place healthy self-talk. And then be patient. Positive self-talk can feel like a foreign language at first. Yes, the transition from negative to healthy self-talk will be slow and take practice. Again, it's a lot like... Um, starting a, um, a strength training routine when you've never done it before. At first, you're not going to have a lot of muscles. And over time, you're going to build them up. Again, it's not, it's absolutely unrealistic for you to set yourself up to say, okay, I'm going to stop this today, and tomorrow I'm going to be good at it. Pick small ways to start. Change one piece of your self-talk at a time. And one of the favorite ways that Athena and I love to give people suggestions on how to say things is to add the word yet onto the end of your sentence, okay? If someone says to us, I am not good at self-talk, chances are high that you're going to hear one or the other of us or both of us pipe <laughs> up and say yet. Yep. Yet. <laughs> exactly. Yet. Okay. So, We're like, so far. So yes. far. <laughs> right. Up to this point. And yep. we were a little chorus of yetters. So when you say something like, um, this day really sucks so far. Yeah. It can change. Um, I am not good at confronting my mother about the things that she says to me yet. Okay? So small changes, incremental changes, they will build up over time. You know, again, just like you're learning a foreign language, you don't go in and, you know, learn how to converse fluently in the grocery store about every single type of fruit in the first 24 hours. First, you're just going to learn how to say a few. So start off small. Set yourself up for success because when you feel successful, you gain momentum. Um, Self-talk, here's, here's more of my, my little pet peeve about affirmations and just the affirmations that are unreasonable, not all affirmations. Self-talk is not about convincing yourself that the world is all rainbows and kittens but about seeing things realistically instead of through the lens of your abuser, okay? And that's something we need to realize is that we, chances are high that we see the world the way our dysfunctional family system taught us to see it. If um, 
and it's a learned, it's a completely learned behavior. Okay, so if your family saw the world as a threatening place, chances are high that you're going to see the world as a threatening place. Realistically, in real life, yes, some places of the world aren't so hot, but you know what? There's a lot of good places too. So, no, the world is not all about unicorns and puppies, but it's also not all about death and dismemberment. Um, so we need to find the middle ground and speak honestly and reasonably with ourselves. So um, I'm feeling sad today, but I'm still okay, rather than today I'm going to feel wonderful all day and seize every opportunity that comes my way. Eh, maybe not. Um, it's what we set ourselves up for success when we speak to ourselves much more reasonably. Self-talk isn't just about our view of ourselves, but our view of our situation and experience. Negative assessments of our circumstances can become self-sabotaging. Saying this is a hard situation is very different from saying, this is terrible, I'm doing awful, I'm never going to be able to face this. Um, and I have several clients right now who are working really hard on this piece because when they were a child, and you guys, this is so understandable. When we were a child, our life was extreme. Bad things happened a lot. And so when we faced a high emotion situation when we were young, when things were bad, chances are they were very, very bad. So to look at a situation when we were a child and go, this is bad, I might not survive this, then that was probably the truth. Um, Athena, I know you can talk about um, watching your mother get beat up and trying to calculate when was the best time to try and run and get to the phone to call 911 before your stepfather ripped the phone out of the wall. Yeah, yeah. It. Th those are things that play in my head all the time, you guys. So, like, if I have, like, if I'm, if, if there's a situation going on and it's a high stress situation, I instantly go to those things. Like those are not things that you quickly forget. No. Yeah. No. Those are, it's... those are deeply, deeply, deeply ingrained from the time, you know, when you're very, 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 very little and your most vivid memories from when you're really little, if they're terrifying, you're going to have catastrophic and terrifying self-talk. Exactly. And yeah. and emotional flashbacks, which we've talked about previously, quite right. quite quite a lot. Um, you know, so, you'll you'll feel those things, and and they'll affect your self talk. Right, and it's not your so it's not your fault. Yeah. If you catastrophize, it's because you learned that when you were a child. When guess what, your situation was catastrophic, but it's not now. Okay, now that. It's not the case if right now you are living in an unsafe situation. So I'm not talking about that. Yeah. But I mean, when you, you know, I have cases of social anxiety. Social anxiety is not my friend, but it is my companion. And there are times when I will walk into a room and I will be seized with a huge amount of fear. And the immediate thought is, oh my gosh. You know, all these people are looking at me. They're staring at me. They're thinking I'm awful. I am not going to make it through. Okay, but that's not true. Yeah. It's not. No, I learned that when I was a child, when I would hear my father's footsteps coming down the hall and I knew what was going to follow. That was catastrophic. Bad stuff was going to happen. Um. But it's different now. And it's okay for me to say, wow, I'm feeling really anxious about going into this room, but I'm going to do my best. It may not turn out the way that I want, but I'm still going to be okay. And you can see how one sets you up.
to function and one sets you up to fail. Because if you look at a situation and you see it as horrible and awful, chances are you're going to experience it as horrible and awful too. Yeah. Um, if you can't think of positive things to say about yourself or the situation you're in, ask for help from your safe support team. We have people every single day come into our support groups, our secret private support groups on Facebook and say, okay, you guys, I just ran into this situation. I want to know what you guys think. This is what I thought when I encountered it. What do you think? And we love it. That's one of the reasons that we set the support groups up. Come in, lay a situation out and say, okay, guys, this is what I'm thinking. And people will be able to say, well, you know, um, I, I can see it this way. Or, yeah, I think you're right. That, it, that that's a valid perception um, and that is an excellent way to use your safe support system because they can give you perspective and validation when you need it and that's why they're there so that's the one page um, and you know if you see the the each of us are, are looking down in our lap what we're doing. Um, we're just reading all the tweets and replying to them. We're trying, so, we're trying to stay um, up to date with I everything. I see that do people so have hard. questions or comments. Can you hear me, Bobby? I can. I can. Oh, what did you say? Oh, I said um, we have so much going on behind the scenes. Um, but I do want to give – I want to I want to acknowledge something. Um, Phoenix says, I want to leave this chat feeling boosted. Let's rock. So, um, I want to, uh, we did, we did an episode on recovery goals and one of Phoenix's recovery goals for 2016 was to, uh, to handle a certain situation with her family. And yesterday or this past weekend, she actually completed her recovery goal and it's only the 4th of January. So, I mean, confetti, hello, that's amazing. Um, it's awesome when you get to like make your set your recovery goals and meet your recovery goals. It's also important, like Bobby was saying, along with the self talk, to set realistic recovery goals because you only every single person only knows what their recovery is about. Every single person only knows what they can handle, and the self talk that is positive for them, or that is that is affirming for them, or that is um, that is actually um, helpful and not destructive or ridiculous. So self-talk is something that is very unique along with recovery. What do you think, Bobby? Absolutely. You know, we, and we can, but we can learn it from each other. And you know, I get a kick out of Dominique here. She's saying, um, oh, now I lost the tweet and I have to go back to it. Yeah, yet, good stuff. I am officially joining the Yetters Club. <laughs> I'm a newly minted Yetter. Yes. So, you know, so and, far. Yes. It's, and it's just one word, you guys, but it changes the whole meaning of the statement. It yet gives and positivity to the future. And it empowers you because when you say, I am no good at this, that's, that's a judgment. On yourself and and why would you even try if you're no good at something right so when you say I am not good at this yet it naturally gives you a boost and the capacity to say okay I'm gonna work on this um, and it doesn't mean that you're going to set aside the rest of your life and spend the next 24 hours you know trying to do a B C or D it just means that you're gonna incorporate working on that in your life and you can do that. And the more that you surround yourself with healthy people who are also um, learning how to talk positively about themselves and the world, and maybe even people who are a few steps ahead of you in learning how to hold um, and themselves, much like you know people who get sponsors within the AA system, within the 12-step system, um, then that's a good thing. 
And we really want to encourage you, if 2016 is going to be the year of you chucking toxic relationships out of your life, then I really encourage you. In fact, we had someone just today um, ask us to do a video about when to dis how to decide when to disclose your abuse, um, to, to, to disclose that you remember your abuse and you know what happened to your abuser because of the fear of losing that person, especially if it happened within your family. And so um, I really want to, it's hard. I really want to encourage you to work on your self-talk, to work on your view of yourself so you can feel worthy of chucking the toxic people out. It's hard to chuck the toxic people out when you don't feel like you're worth a life without them. So we keep circling back to that self-worth piece. And it is just, you guys, it is critical. It's just critical for our recovery that we work on our self-worth. Um, self-talk helps, but self-talk is also based on our self-worth, so it's cyclical. It is. Like many things in our recovery. Cycle, cycle, cycles. We have a whole bunch of people, um, you guys, tweeting in right now talking about things they say to themselves that are positive self-talk that help them throughout the day. And two of them, one of them from Laura and one of them from um, Kate, I believe, or is it August? I think it's it's either August or Kate. Anyway, there, I have so much going on. They say, I am safe. Yes. I am safe. I am safe. That's and August. I, I do that, you guys. I do that so often, especially if I wake up. Like, I've been having nightmares a lot lately, and I have to repeat to myself over and over and over, I am safe. I am safe. And Laura just tweeted in that she does, I am enough. I am enough. Yes. I am enough. And you guys, I do both of those. Those are both really, really good. And I, and I know that this is just my own little flavor on things. I know you're super, super surprised that my flavor is a gratitude and it's like confetti or whatever. But I start it with a gratitude. Thank you that I am safe. Thank you that I am enough. Thank you. Like I'm like claiming it. Yes. Thank you. I am safe. I am enough. Like I'm like it. I, I, I use the, I use the, I start almost everything with a gratitude because it helps me turn my negative into a positive. It's the quickest way for me to do that. And it really does sink in for me personally. Again, people's self-talk needs to be their own flavor. Not everyone likes rainbows and gratitudes and confetti and like, that's not everybody's flavor of self-talk, but it's right. mine. You know? right. So you have to um, do what works for you. Exactly. But I love your guys' examples of self-talk, that I am safe and I am enough. I do both of those and they work a lot. And I also, um, like I said earlier, I want to really stress how powerful and helpful it is if you have a safe person that you can reach out to and say, I'm struggling with thinking negative thoughts right now. Could you please tell me something true about myself? Tell me the truth yeah. about what you're thinking right now. I, I have in my head that you're thinking these things. Are you thinking these things? And, you know, my husband will say, well, first, I think you're amazing. And second, the house looks awesome. And you're a great cook. And no, I'm not thinking I don't like the, your food. And no, I'm not thinking that the decorations don't look good. I'm thinking the opposite of that. You know, so if you take anything away from tonight's broadcast, Self-talk is your own flavor. You have to choose it for yourself. No one can choose it for you. Right. And, and it's always helpful to be in community with someone else who can help you with this self-talk. You can bounce something off of because when we look in the mirror and the reflection that we see is distorted and ugly and all of the things from the voices that were told to us, that's not the real reflection. When, right. we look to, when we look to someone who's a safe person and they're reflecting back to us, like we had Sarah and Angela tweet Bobby and I tonight saying that, that we're wonderful and we're kind and we're beautiful. Like that's not what I see when I look in the mirror. I think, and someone tweeted this morning that I was gorgeous and I about like peed myself. I'm like, 
you guys, I don't look at that. You know, it's horrible, but I was just like, oh my gosh. Like, I felt like I needed to go run under the covers. It was just, I don't take, we don't take compliments well sometimes because we weren't, that's not part of our training and our grooming, you guys. I don't see myself in that light. I don't see myself as gorgeous and beautiful and awesome and amazing, but we'll, you know, but other people reflect that to me. And I can receive it if I just take a deep breath and I allow myself to receive that compliment. It, but it's not a, it's not a, um, it's not a process that is linear. It, me receiving a compliment from someone and allowing it to sink in is not a linear process. It doesn't just come from their mouth into my ears and me go, yay, thank you. Like it's not effortless like that. It's them saying it, me receiving it, me going, are they just trying to be nice? Like what? that can't be right. Like, are, are they talking to me? Like, and then I think of all the times that I was told the opposite because that's easier to believe. And then I rattle around the compliment in my head and then I almost pee myself. And then I finally receive the compliment somehow like 15 minutes later. So like you guys, it's not a linear process. Recovery is not linear self-talk and, and receiving compliments and, and, and realizing our self-worth, all of this is not a linear process. It is, it is so um, complicated. It is so complicated because our abuse was complicated, you guys. It wasn't just like yeah. one, it wasn't one time. Like something happened one time and it was, and the person said, oh, I am so sorry. I should have never done that. Are you okay? Oh, let's get you the help you need. I am so, 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 so sorry. And even if that was how it happened, you're still pretty messed up from the abuse itself. Like it doesn't just like make it all better. On top of everything else that's gone on for years afterwards and the lies and the gaslighting and the covering up and the sweeping it under the rug and the wondering what's really going on, you guys, it's complicated. Okay, abuse is complicated. So doing this self-talk and, and recovering from abuse and really making the progress that we desire to make is complicated. It is not simple and it is not a linear process. So um, we had a lot going on. A lot of people were very, 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 very triggered tonight. Um, I And I love that, that Kate was saying, wow, one simple word, yet, can change almost any negative self-talk phrase. A and B, you guys rock. Hey, we're A and B. I love it, we're A and B. Um, yeah, there's just so much going on tonight, guys. We're so sorry that, that there are so many people that are triggered, but please know that we love you and we appreciate each and every one of you. We are going to go ahead and put up our contact information now so yep. that new, new people that have never seen this broadcast before can follow a simple four-step process on getting plugged into a safe community so that they won't wonder what a safe person is. So thank you to, <laughs> <laughs> thank you to each and every one of you that, um, that are reaching out and that are showing up and that are tweeting and supporting one another. We love you and we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Next week's topic is... Bobby, I forget what next week's topic is already. How do I forget that already? I know. I know. It went in my head and right back out. Um, we'll have to let you guys know what next week's topic is. But follow, follow us on Twitter. Yeah, follow us on Twitter. We we'll always be announce it on Twitter. Yeah, we'll be tweeting it out, you guys. And we love your retweets, by the way. Your, your retweets are amazing. And if this video has been helpful for you, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and share it with your friends on Facebook and Twitter and other social media outlets. We love you. Let's talk about ways to join our safe community and ways to interact with our safe community. Um, Athena, can you see the slide? I I can. I can Yay. see it. It's, it um, okay. I don't have my glasses on, and it's a little bit That's small. Okay, okay hang on. Eva makes it bigger. And then yeah. we'll just go down. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, I think it's easier to see that way. It looks really good. Okay, so again, three Twitter chats a week. You are welcome to any and all of them. They are completely open, um, except if you come in and say bad things, and then um, we we each have the practice of blocking you from our Twitter stream. Yes, we can do that. Yes, but um, they're open to everyone. 
Um, and the first one is again Mondays, and that is hashtag is CSAQT, Child Sexual Abuse Question Time. That is Mondays at 10 a.m. Pacific time, and that's 6 o'clock in the UK on Monday evening. And then here is the second one. You're uh, participating it right now. If you're with us live, the hashtag is no more shame. And that is always at 6 p.m. Pacific time on Monday evening, which is Tuesday at 2 a.m. And then Tuesday night, the hashtag is sex abuse chat. And that is at 6 p.m. Pacific time, which is 2 o'clock on Wednesday morning. Um, use the hashtags to interact with us on Twitter. And it is um, super easy to be involved. It can be kind of tricky sometimes to get the hang of in the beginning, but stick with it and you will figure it out and you will become more comfortable with it. Um, you can interact with us on these Monday night broadcasts by using that no more shame hashtag. And then we will um, address your comments and answer as many questions as we can. Yes. Um, we have multiple uh, private safe support groups on Facebook, and there is a simple four-step method of being able to get plugged into those. And we ask that you please follow this method rather than emailing us or sending us a message on our business page. Um, this is just truly the easiest way to do this, um, keeping in mind that right now, it's just Athena and I doing everything, and we also work full-time jobs uh, yes, exactly. besides this. So yeah. <laughs> if, if you could follow this method, it would be so helpful for us. It'll and, help us until we yes. can get more and more volunteers ramped and up. We and we are, yes. In. And we have yeah. volunteers selected, and we're in the process of training as we speak, so it will get better soon. But in the meantime, we really ask for your understanding um, as you follow this particular method. And that is to go to Facebook, Facebook backslash, forward slash Trauma Recovery University, yeah. go to that page, like it. And then send friend requests to both Athena and I, because one of us might get a chance to get back to you before the other one. So send us friend requests. Um, unless your profile looks like really sketchy and you just opened it yesterday and you have no friends, um, chances are high that we're going to accept your friend request. And then send us a private Facebook message saying, I'd like to heal in safe community. Yes. Um, and, and you guys, Bobby, I just wanted to add this really quick for, for anyone that, that's tuning in. If you send us an email and at no more shame project at gmail.com and then you let us know that you sent us a friend request on Facebook, but if your Twitter handle is a different name than your actual name, we're not going to know who you are on Facebook and we approve all of our friend requests on Facebook, but we won't know unless you tell us what name to look for. So please, please, please um, let us know who you are. And if you feel safe and you would like to join one of our online safe communities, they are globally accessible in any country because every single country in the world has Facebook right now as far as I know. Um, but yeah, we need to know who you are. So Bobby, does that make sense? Yes, did I, yes. Okay. Did, I, mean, right. I mean, I know it makes sense, but did it make sense the way that I said it? <laughs> yes. So, you know, if your Facebook name is, you know, uh, Donna Stone, but your email name that you're using is, you know, Fluffy Panda, um, don't say I send you a friend request, why won't you have accepted it? Because we won't be able to put Fluffy Panda and Donna Stone together. So, yeah. um, and, we, and we normally do accept all of the friend requests, but the messages that we receive, the private messages... They go into some other graveyard, never to be read ever folder unless we are already friends. So follow this exact process, please. Number one, like our page at facebook.com forward slash trauma recovery university. Number two, friend us, both of us. And like Bobby said, then after we accept your friend request, send us a private message letting us know you would like to heal in safe community at which point we will complete our vetting process by asking you a few questions about your recovery journey and once we are 
um, confident of the safety and security of the other members of the group, then we will welcome you in, introduce you, and get you plugged into Safe Community. So, um, so thank you so much, you guys. And sorry to be redundant, but it's very important that you follow it the process this way. It makes it a lot easier for Bobby and myself to get you guys plugged in. Yes, 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 yes. So let's look at um, how to connect with us. <clears throat> Very last here. Yes. And way too many tabs open on my computer. Way too many. I feel like I should like sing the Jeopardy song or something, hum it in the background. <laughs> um, I, th I think I did that one time and then we got, yeah. people started requesting that we would sing every week and I just, I can't, I, you do not want that, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's how to contact us. And again, because it's only the two of us right now, although we have, selected volunteers and we're in the process of training. This will change soon. Um, right now it's just the two of us in our free time um, attending to these things. So if you email us, please be patient in terms of looking for a reply. Um, I am Bobby L. Parrish at gmail.com. Athena is Athena Moberg speaking at gmail.com. And then we have the joint project email of no more shame project at gmail.com. We would love to connect with you on Twitter. My handle is Bobby L. Parrish. Athena is Athena Moberg. And then Trauma Recovery U for Trauma Recovery University. We are also on YouTube, Roku TV, and Google Plus. Just search for the name Trauma Recovery University. On Facebook, we have the Trauma Recovery University page. My professional page is Bobby Parrish Coaching and Consulting. My personal page is Bobby Parrish. Athena's professional page is Athena Moberg Speaking. And her personal page is Dawn Athena Moberg. And there we go. Yay. Thanks, Yay. Bobby. Oops, sorry. Hang on. There we go. Awesome. Well, we are so excited uh, that you guys ha have stuck with us. We still have people that are tuning in live. So thank you very much. This is a weekly Google Hangout on Air live stream that renders over to our YouTube channel and then our Roku TV channel. So you're the reason that we show up every single week. Every week we receive emails at nomoreshameproject at gmail.com that, re that recommend topics that they want covered. People recommend topics that they want covered in the coming weeks and months. And we are putting together a 2016 editorial calendar. And it's sort of all over the board right now. But our goal is to have it all set up so we can do memes and you guys can be retweeting and, and make this a little bit more organized. But we need all of our volunteers in place first because we just have way too much on our plates. So um, if you have a request for a topic for hashtag no more shame live Q&A at nomoreshameproject.com, um, myself, Athena Moberg, and my amazing partner and esteemed colleague, Bobby Parrish, we would love to hear from you and we would love to hear your comments. We do our best to respond to our YouTube comments and our emails and everything within 48 hours, but is just not humanly possible right now, you guys. Our channel is growing. We have 700 YouTube subscribers, and then we have a 1,000 people on a newsletter list. We've never even sent out a newsletter yet. Um, and when, Plus, we have all of our 1,000 people on Facebook and our tens of thousands of people on Twitter. You guys, there are a lot of adult survivors of childhood sexual abuse out there that need support. And we are doing the absolute best we can. So if you would like to volunteer or you have a topic request or anything at all, please connect with us because we appreciate you and you are the reason we show up every week. Bobby, what would you like to say to everybody before we say goodbye? I'm so glad that you're here and we are honored that you choose to spend an hour of your week with us. Um, like Athena said, this is doing these videos and being here for you guys is... Um, part of what makes our world go round. So thank you for sharing some of your time with us. Yeah, it's definitely one of the highlights of our entire week, you guys. So 
thank you for being a part of our family. We appreciate you and we have the utmost respect for your recovery journey. And we know that everything we talk about is, is just a suggestion because every single person's recovery and the style and the, the way in which they go about their recovery is completely up to them. So we're just here to be um, a support to you and to, to sort of enhance your menu options. So thank you again for all of your support. I'm Athena Moberg and this is Bobby Parrish and we love to bring you everything you need for healthy, informed trauma recovery. See you next week, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Aloha, everybody.